get to look into your word. I pray, Lord, that you will uh, guide us and direct us and, and communicate your message to our hearts and to our minds, Lord, to cause us to be the people that you have called us to be. Lord, as we prepare to send off our, our gifts to Project Christmas Child, uh, Father, I pray your blessing will go with these boxes. That, Lord, it won't just be toothbrushes and, and, and things to entertain people, but, Father, that they will sense and feel and understand the love of Jesus Christ as they receive these gifts. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Thinking about Veterans Day and, and soldiers and things like that, I thought it would be appropriate to uh, look into God's Word and see what God's Word may have for us. What is the definition, first of all, of a soldier? A soldier, according to Webster, is one engaged in military service and especially in the army. So I thought that my son and Casey would certainly appreciate that particular definition. Uh, an enlisted man or woman, a skilled warrior. So I, again, I extend my thank yous to you guys, you ladies, who have served our country faithfully and helped to make it what it is. This morning I want to talk about uh, what does it mean to be a soldier of Christ? Because in case you haven't noticed... We are in a spiritual war. How many of you understand that, that it's war out there? It really is. And the Bible is very clear, isn't it? Our struggle is not with flesh and blood. It's not people. It's not human beings that we're fighting against. What is it? It's the powers of what? Evil. Darkness. Okay. Uh, there is a real being called Satan. Satan. There are real beings called demons and, and there is a power out there that would want to come against everything that Christ is all about. And that's the struggle that we're in. That's the war that we're in. As, as soldiers of Christ, look at what the book of 2 Timothy says. Paul is writing to Timothy here to encourage him and he's, he is basically getting ready to hand off the baton, if you will. Paul's coming to the end of his ministry and young Timothy has stepped up to the plate and it's his turn now and Paul's encouraging him. He is, he is challenging Timothy and I thought that these words would be appropriate for us this morning. Paul says, listen, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Now, for those of you who have actually been in the military, I mean, I'm thinking you're just like, wow, you're really connecting with that because uh, what if you were assigned a specific task by your commanding officer and, and you just weren't in the mood and you went off and you get, did something completely different? That wouldn't go so well, would it? That wouldn't have worked out very well at all. But you know, uh, the bottom line is we are all soldiers of Christ. And there is a specific mission that we should be working to accomplish. I mean, what did Jesus talk about to his disciples when he left? Go ye out into where? All the world and do what? Make disciples, preach the gospel, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. I mean, we're supposed to be involved in this whole thing about spreading the gospel. Hey, newsflash, we have good news. We have the answer to all of the problems that exist in our society through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as a soldier, as, a, as a, a member of that particular army, of the Lord's army, we should be involved in the cause. And we should not be entangling ourselves in the affairs of this world. And, and that doesn't mean, well, that means I can't go have a job or I can't do... That's not what I'm saying. But we can't be so involved in pursuing the goals and the dreams of this world that we lose sight of who we really are in Christ. I mean, go be successful. 
Get your college education. You know, be a successful business owner. Be the best employee that you can be for your employer. But, but first of all, be a good Christian. Be a soldier of the cross. Here's a, a creed and some thoughts that I found actually on an army website. Uh, and, and they have a program that they actually call Soldiers of Christ. And so uh, I, I stole some of their thoughts. Not original. I admit that. But that's cool. It says, I'm a soldier of the living God. I'm going to claim my kingdom. I'm claiming my kingdom because the Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. I love this part. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. How many of you know that according to what this book says, this book actually says that through our knowledge of Christ, which we find in this book, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And those of you who are students of the Word probably know where that is. Doesn't matter. It's in Peter. Uh, but, but everything that we need for life and for godliness is found right here in this book. Is it your code of conduct this morning? Is this the guidebook that you use to determine the path that you choose to walk in your life? Because you see, uh, God made us unique. God has made us different from the deer that I just ran into the other night on the way to decorate at the reception hall. That deer is, is a product of instinct and doesn't have the ability to, to reason and to make choices. I've got the ability to decide who I'm going to be. I've got the ability to make a choice how I'm going to live. And as a soldier of Christ, it would be my hope and my challenge and my prayer to you this morning that, listen, make a choice to live according to what this book, the Word of God, teaches. And I can promise you one thing. You'll be blessed. Will everything be easy and fun and, 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 and not hard? No. There will be difficult times. But through them, you'll be blessed. Okay? That's the difference. So, the Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the Word are the weapons of my warfare. Just a little story about one of the other little mini miracles that happened yesterday. Um, as I practiced the wedding ceremony Saturday morning at home, I literally lost it. Uncontrollable tears three times. Three different times. And I'm thinking, dude, there is no way you're going to be able to get up there and do this thing. I mean, there's just no way. And so I grabbed my cellular device and I called and I talked to Aunt Donna. And I said, man, I need some prayer warriors. I need some people praying for me because this is going to be very emotional. And, and, and God allowed and God caused it to, to happen that that I didn't blubber like a big baby. <laughs> so praise God for that. But you know what? Is that what we go to in our life? Do we really approach life with faith and with prayer and with the Word of God? I mean, is that how we handle a difficult situation when it comes our way? Or do we waste our time trying to sort things out in our own strength and, oh man, i got to do this and i got to... Listen, prayer, faith, the Word of God, it's real. It works. It's the right answers. It's how we should live life. That should be the weapons of our warfare. We cannot fight against Satan in our own strength. Okay? Here's the deal. Satan is a vicious dog. And if you get near him, man, he's going to chew you up and eat you for breakfast. And so, here's the beautiful thing. Jesus Christ has defeated Satan. Okay, so, so here he is. Big dog is on a chain. Okay, are you with me? Big dog is still vicious. He's still got big teeth. He's still got all the snarling happening. But, but see, Jesus has placed him on a chain. And here it is. Here we are as Christians. What do we do? 
We want to get down into His territory where, where He can reach us. See, He's tied up and He can't go any farther than here. And we want to get as close as we can to sin. And that's where we want to try to live. And then we wonder, oh, we lost track. Oh, hmm, I drifted into it. And we wonder why we're getting chewed up. We wonder why we're getting defeated. We're wondering why Satan is having his way with us. We need to stay away from sin. We need to stay out of Satan's territory. Listen, as long as we do what this Bible says, as long as we use the Holy Bible as our code of conduct, we are not in Satan's domain and he has no power over us in Jesus' name. Do you realize that? Do you understand the power that we have? Listen, in Jesus' name, demons have to flee. Praise God. In, in Jesus' name, Satan has no power over us. And that's why God has said, listen, trust and obey. For there is no other way. Okay? When we choose to disobey what this word says, when we choose to not do what the Bible says, oh, it might be fun for a while. And it seems like, oh man, this is really cool. I'm getting away with this. I'm having a good time. But I'm telling you from personal experience, it will come back to haunt you. So trust and obey. Faith, prayer, and the Word, those are our weapons. Because we are in warfare. And then he, they say, I've been taught by the Holy Spirit. I have been trained by experience. How many of you have ever messed up in life? Oh, come on now. I know you're not all holy. Okay? How many of you have ever messed up in life? Okay? Yeah. Big time. Hello. Big time. Okay? Big, big time. But guess what? The Holy Spirit has taught me. And I have been moldable and shapeable and teachable and I, and I have learned through those experiences. That's the way we need to approach life. We're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. You're going to mess up. But let's be teachable through it. Let's allow God to use our experiences to help make us more and more like Him. Amen? I've been tried by adversity and I've been tested by fire. Oh, here's the one that I love. I am a volunteer in this army. See, this is the army that we all signed up for. See, when I bowed my head and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord, it made me a part of His army. Okay? It's not something that God, you know, God doesn't cause us to be robots. He doesn't force us to do anything. He gives us all the ability to decide. Listen, yes, I receive Him. I will follow Him. I will obey Him. I will, I love this line. Oh, this is a beautiful one. I will retire either in this army at the rapture or I will die in this army. You know what that means? It never ends, does it? As long as we're breathing, we're in the Lord's army. As long as we have life, here's what I know. God has equipped us to do something. God has given you gifts. He's given you talents. He's given you abilities. And He expects you to be using them for His glory. As long as you shall live. Sounds like yesterday. As long as we both shall live. And, and it's just what I said. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're already enlisted. The question is, are you active duty in the Lord's army? Are you serving the Lord faithfully, daily, and on duty 24-7, 365 days a year? I can tell you a handful of people who were on duty yesterday. Not a duty they signed up for, but they were on duty. Are you on duty for the Lord? Or are you in the reserve status? You'll serve when you're called upon or you'll do your twice a year duties. You'll be here on Christmas. You'll be here on Easter. We call them priesters. You know, oh, here comes the priesters. They're going to be here on Christmas. They're going to be here on Easter twice a year, whether they like it or not. You know, I don't think that's what the Lord's interested in. How about the guard status? 
well, you'll just be behind the scenes and you'll be backing up the active duty group. You're not really engaged in anything. You're not even praying. You're just sort of like hanging out. I'm not sure that that's what the Lord had in mind either. Maybe you're AWOL. Absent without the Lord. That's kind of cool, ain't it? <laughs> AWOL. You know, I know some AWOL people. Man, they, they just don't even... <laughs> they're just not around. They're not here. They're not walking with the Lord. Um, I don't think that's what God has in mind either. Here's the mission. If you don't believe that we're, that we're in warfare, let me read to you again out of Timothy. Paul says this. He says, listen, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And that scripture goes on to say, have nothing to do with those people. Do you understand we're in the last days? I mean, do you understand that really, technically, ever since Jesus, the advent of Jesus, how many of you know that the whole world believes in Jesus? We set our time. You ever heard the terminology B.C., before Christ, A.D.? Okay. The, the world has basically organized itself around Christ. Ever since Christ was here and born, died on the cross and was risen again, that triggered the last days. So some 2,000 years ago, this period that we refer to as the last days had begun. I, and so now I can say that we're in kind of the last of the last days, the way I see it. The way I understand Scripture, the things that have been prophesied, many through the book of Daniel, some through the book of Revelation, some in Matthew, some in Zechariah, some all over the Bible. Many of the things that have been talked about and, and prophesied and said, look, this is the stuff that's going to happen. Most of that stuff has already happened. And I believe that the next thing that we should be looking for is, is that trumpet call where we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord forever. Okay, I, I think that we're close. I really do. And he said, listen, Paul said, there's going to be terrible times in the last days. And then he goes on to describe that peoples will be lovers of them, peoples. People will be lovers of themselves and lovers of money. Doesn't that sound like our society today? I mean, listen, did you see some of the political ads? I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of love there, was there? I mean, it was like, wow, that sounds like where we are. That sounds like the days and times that we live in. We're in a war. And we are Christ's soldiers. We are His ambassadors. We are the ones that need to stand firmly and be the beacons of truth in this war. That's, who, that's where we're living. That's who we're called to be. Here's the charge. Paul goes on to say to Timothy, he says, listen, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who will judge the living and the dead and in view of His appearing, in other words, listen, God's coming with His judgment, Jesus is fixing to come back and in view of all that, I give you, he says, this charge. Preach the Word. What does that mean? That means take what is written in this book and live it proclaim it, magnify it by the way that you live your life. Talk about it when you speak words to people. Raise your kids according to it. And most of all, live by it. Preach, proclaim the Word. Be prepared in season and out of season. In other words, listen, the time to preach the Word and the time to proclaim the Word and the time to, to live as Christians is not just on Sunday mornings. But it's on Monday, Tuesday afternoon, 
It's in season and out of season. It is a way of life. So he said, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience. You're not in people's face with two by fours hitting them in the head. Most of the time. Sometimes you are. Sometimes I get that way. But, but listen, with great patience and careful instruction. Careful what? Careful to handle this correctly. Careful to take the circumstances of life and lay them down next to God's Word and say, okay, this is what I feel like doing. This is what my emotions are telling me I should do. What does God's Word say? Carefully instructing with patience, helping people to see the truth, to see the light, to understand that, listen, there is a way that is right in God's eyes. Going on in verse 3, For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. People, please hold my feet to the fire. Never let me Stop preaching the Word of God. Don't let me become a warm, fuzzy, sugar-coated, happy preacher. I mean, I'm pretty happy. Okay? It's good to be happy. But man, I want to, I want to preach the truth. I want to tell it like it is. I want you to understand that God's Word is very clear. There isn't as much gray area as what many of us would like to think. It is what it is. And let's continue to preach it. Let's continue to live it. And, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Do you know what one of the fastest growing beliefs about the origin of the world is? One of the fastest growing new beliefs that's gaining popularity is that there is a group of people that actually are teaching and say that they believe that aliens came and brought us into existence. Seriously. I mean, that's happening. <laughs> there are people that have actually believed that. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. It's on Google. Go look it up for yourself. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're turning away from the truth. And they're believing myths. And stuff that's like, you got to be kidding me. And people are walking away from God. No, no. Let me correct myself. People are running away from God. People are running away from God. And, and listen to what Paul says. But listen, verse 5. Not you. You keep your head in all situations. See, that's what we've been given. We've been given the Holy Spirit of God. That if we will pay attention... If we will engage our minds and engage our efforts and read the Bible and, and rely on the Holy Spirit, He has given us the power to be sensible about how we handle life. He has given us the ability to do this right if we'll only choose to. If we'll be obedient to it. If we'll make it a mindset that this is how we're going to live. I am going to be a soldier. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to make this statement. I am a soldier in the army of my living God. I'm going to be marching and claiming victory. I love victory. How many of you ever played sports? Losing stinks, doesn't it? I hate to lose. I, I, I don't like to lose at anything. Even cards or... Or what? Wee bowling. wee bowling, yeah. I hate wee bowling. I love wee bowling, but I hate wee bowling. You know the game wee? You stand around and flail around and you can bowl. Anyway, listen. Here's the good news. See, I have read the back of the book. We win. Ain't that cool? Huh? We win. You know, we, we win. 
And, and so at the end of the day, here's what I know. I want to be on this team. I want to be in this army. I want to march to this drumbeat because we're winners. And it might not always feel like it and it might not always seem like it and it might seem like, oh man, you got to be kidding me. Come on, that stuff is so ancient. That 'stuff is so outdated. Come on, we're in 2010, Rocky. I understand that. But this is still truth. And it is still worth living it this way. Because at the end of the day, this is how we will be on the winning team. Yeah, we can try to invent other stuff. We can try to create all these good ideas and, well, you know, I think I'll just do it this way because it feels good to me. Well, at the end of the day, you're going to lose if that's how you choose to live. So, I am going to be marching and claiming victory, not because of anything I've done, but because of, praise God, what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us by defeating the cross and rising up from the dead. Amen? Amen. We don't serve a dead God. You know, we don't have to build some fat little statue and put him on a desk and say, well, that's our God. No, our God is alive. And He is coming back soon. Okay? I will not give up. Is life hard? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could talk about how difficult sometimes it is. But I will not give up. And I will not turn around. We sing a song. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. How many have ever sung that song? That's the way it is. Hey, you're on the team. You're in the army. There is no turning back. No turning back. I am a soldier pursuing my potential. And, and I understand that the only reason that I have any potential at all is because I have the Spirit of the living God living inside of me. Because in and of my own self, I would be a big mess. I really would be. I know I'm a mess sometimes anyway. But if it was all up to me, man, I would be a loser. I really would. But praise God. Because He has saved me and He has equipped me to do His work. And that's the way all of us really should be thinking about it. You've got the Spirit of the living God living inside of you. There is nothing that you can accomplish for His name's sake. I'm claiming my kingdom. Who will stand with me? Here I stand. If you'll stand with me and you'll be faithful to be a soldier of Christ, you stand and let's sing this last song. As in any war, 
there are casualties. And in this life, many of us have suffered some of those casualties. Spiritual blows that cause us to question our faith. Things that happen in our life with maybe our kids that, that have cut us to the core. Stuff that happens that hurts. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. And sometimes we don't. But here is the truth. It is always worth it to spend time reevaluating your own personal journey. Because you can't control the other people in your life. You can't even control the circumstances of your life. But what you can do is you can be faithful to regroup and refocus on your commander in chief. His name is Jesus. And wherever you are, my challenge to you this morning is to make sure that you take some time to get it right between you and Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for the many who have served our country so faithfully as was represented earlier by those that came forward. Thank you for those of our numbers who are unable to be with us today. We ask that you would bless them, encourage them, and remind them that you love them. And now, Lord, for us who have heard your word, who have been challenged once again by your scripture, Lord, bring that message home as only you can do to communicate one message to many people in your special way. Help us to walk out of here recommitted and reminded that we serve the greatest commander of all time, Jesus Christ. We are on the winning side. Yes, we are in war and yes, sometimes we hurt. But Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will bind up those wounds and once again energize us to be the soldiers of Christ that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.